microphones. You please cut them off. Uh, we're going to start our agenda night with a call order. We have an invocation. Pastor Mike McCauley, is he? Okay, well, there you are, sir. We're going to do you, and then after him, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance, and we have a scout. So, Zach Revels, you're in here, and we'll call you up after Pastor gets through. Thank you for doing this, sir. If you want to please stand. Good evening, gentlemen. It is an honor to be here with you tonight. Uh, I want to remind you that in the book of Joshua, in the first chapter, Moses is dead. God has called Joshua to take his place. And he tells him how to lead this entire nation to prosperity. And here's what it says. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of serving. And Lord, we thank you for all of these good men that serve you. I pray that you give them wisdom. I pray that you lead them. I pray that you instruct them. I pray that you protect them. Be with us, Lord, in this business meeting tonight and whatever is, is done. And Lord, I pray that all that we do, you'll be pleased with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Pastor McCullough, and thanks for all the church does in our community. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Zach, where are you at? Zach? Oh, there's that young man right there. Come on up here and show us how to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Come right up here to the front. And there's your flag right there. What do we do? I pledge, pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, Zach's with Troop 258, and I'll have to give Zach some credit. He's pretty brave to come up by himself. I don't know where the rest of your troop members are, but you get extra credit for, for coming by yourself, okay? <laughs> Anything you'd like to say? All right. Thank you. <laughs> with that, we'll have the roll call. Here. Mayor, President, President. Council Member Williams. Here. 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 We're all here. Next, you have the approval of the minutes from March 21, 2017, and April 4, 2017. Move to adopt. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have presentations. Our first one is a resolution expressing appreciation for service rendered by Keith Smith as an employee of the city for more than 30 years. So I'm going to read this, Keith, and then we're going to get you to come up here. And I've probably known Keith about all these 30 years, and I really hate to read this. As a matter of fact, I wish I could figure out how to rescind it. And the only thing I can say is, in government, the good thing about government is when people like Keith retire, they stay going about six months, and they come back as consultants. So there's always a chance, Keith, that you can come back. So this is resolution 2017-41, expressing appreciation for service rendered by Keith Smith as an employee of the city of Goldsboro for more than 30 years. Keith retires on July 1, 2017 as a safety coordinator with the Human Resources Department of the city of Goldsboro with more than 30 years of service. Keith began his career on January 19, 1987 as a labor one in the public works department. On February 3, 1998, he was promoted to materials control worker in the public works. On January 3, 1989, Keith was promoted to Equipment Operator 2 in the Public Works. On February 6, 1991, Keith was promoted to Materials Controller with the Public Works. On September 3, 1997, Keith was promoted to Construction Inspector with the Engineering Department. On July 1, 2015, Keith was promoted to Safety Coordinator with the Human Resources Department, where he has served until his retirement. Whereas Keith has proved himself to be a dedicated and efficient public servant, who has gained the admiration and respect of his fellow workers and the citizens of the city of Goldsboro. Whereas the mayor and the city council of the city of Goldsboro are desirous on behalf of themselves, employees, and the citizens of the city of Goldsboro of expressing to Keith their deep appreciation and gratitude for the service rendered by him to the city over the years. Therefore, it be resolved by the mayor and the city council of the city of Goldsboro, North Carolina, that number one, we express to Keith our deep appreciation and gratitude for the dedicated service rendered during his tenure with the city of Goldsboro. We offer Keith our very best wishes for success, happiness, prosperity, and good health in his future endeavors. 
This resolution shall be in, incorporated in the official message. The city of Goldsboro shall be in full force and effect from and after this, the 26th day of June 2000. All for this for approval. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All right, come on up, Keith. Not a fun part comes. There she is. Yeah, Mayor, before you let him get well, I would like Pam to come up and just say well, something talk. nice about, about Keith. Well, Pam will talk first, and then you can talk. That's right. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Thank you, sir. I would just like to say that Keith came to us shy two years ago. He hit the ground running in human resources, having come from the engineering department. He made sure all of our departments were in compliance with safety. He's been on a lot of vehicle accident calls, also responded to our safety committee meetings. And he's definitely been an asset, and we definitely want to Thank you, man. Well, thank y'all for allowing me to work here for 30 years. I appreciate it. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, Thanks Keith. for everything you did. Good job. <laughs> okay, still under presentations, we have the Gold Soar Award, and it's Human Resources. So, Pam, is that you? several awards to present tonight. We have several individuals who, being, who are being recognized tonight for going above and beyond the call of duty, whether it's for customer service, their professional duties, or just helping out with our citizens. And I'm going to ask the nominated persons if they would come up and if you would just read the statements that warranted these persons receiving the Ghost Star Award. So first I'm going to call Captain Thomas Underwood. TJ. Just Archie. <laughs> how are you? Good evening, sir. Good. How are you? Good. Hope you are. Uh, on April 1st, Firefighter Britt, been a firefighter with Goldsboro for many years, um, went above and beyond a call of duty after a Saturday long day of chores. Everybody knows the fire department works hard on Saturdays. You see us out doing the yards, grass, trucks. Uh, decided upon himself to uh, do what he could to beautify the fire department. He spent over eight hours after his day of work sanding and painting our uh, traffic barrier poles, the yellow poles out front in front and back of the fire station. Right by himself, didn't ask for help. He had no motivation to do it. He's not trying to get promoted, not in any way trying to get an advancement. He done it because it needed to be done. And uh, I thank you to a lot of pride and a lot of effort to do that. So I just want to thank you for doing that and I appreciate you guys recognizing that. All right. Pardon? He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Appreciate it. Can you get a picture? Yeah. Yeah, I know you want to get it. Look, I've known him since we were this, this high. We used to work together. And now we're both wearing glasses and still working. <laughs> He's still working. <laughs> <laughs> That's good call. <laughs> I do know you guys. Yeah, I'm like, you know how to work. Randy, where are you, where are you at? Yeah. No, you're not. Okay. You're not even here. Let me hold a chip. Let me hold a chip. Maybe you give it to him, maybe you won't. Are you here? Like you're excited. We'll talk. We'll talk next year to summer. Okay. Yeah, you know, the thing is, you got to buy everybody one. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about her. That's the official city camera right there. Next, we'll have Captain Julia Whitney. How y'all doing today? All right. How are you? All right. Um, 
Let me read my little. All right, so uh, Firefighter Coley, which is behind me, he's uh, been on my crew for a little while this year. Um, back in April, we went on an EMS call down in uh, on Slocum Street. And while we were there, the lady called saying she was uh, needed some medical assistance. And what actually happened was the lady had been sitting in a chair for three days. And um, she has an amputee, missing one leg, had no help, family didn't live in town. So what we did was uh, when we got in there, she had defecated on herself and on the chair she had been sitting in for three days. So we assisted her getting up, getting to the bathroom, making sure she got clean. And uh, Firefighter Coley took it upon himself to clean the lady's chair and the floor, mopped it up, made the house look as clean as it could. Um, so he went above and beyond because yeah. the rest of us were ready to leave, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so I put him in for the award and I appreciate y'all recognizing him. Uh, I just believe in customer service is what he did and he went above on that. So right. good deal. Very good. Agree. dynamic duo. <laughs> Something like that, right? That's right? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I nominated Laura because I felt like she did an outstanding job in representing not only the city manager's office, but also the city of Goldsboro at the Wings Over Wayne Air Show. Laura met numerous times with county staff and base officials to ensure our part in the air show was a success. She worked countless hours leading up to and during the air show providing excellent customer service. She ensured our sponsorship tent was set up. She um, was greeting guests and making sure the chalet was <clears throat> with, um, stocked with snacks and water and made sure that um, all of our items promoting the city of Goldsboro was available. Um, we received several positive comments, including this one from the base. I want to personally thank you for everything the City of Goldsboro did for my staff. I especially thank you for your generosity to the troops who worked so hard. You welcomed them with open arms. I truly enjoyed working with you to make this weekend a memorable experience. You made my job easy. Laura supports me on a daily basis, so if I get a little choked up, I'm sorry. But she did an outstanding job representing the city. daily if I'm here some will say apparently that I'm not here enough but if I am here and I will tell you Laura's special because anybody that knows me I'll come in with like a five-page letter so Laura will you type this I need an hour and it's pretty chicken scratch and if she's gotten a system now and she figures me out and we but but her and Melissa do an awesome job they're a great team and, and we'd be lost without both of you and we really do appreciate what y'all do and the only thing you did wrong on this day is about 15 degrees too hot I agree. <laughs> Next time you'll try to order the weather, right? There you go. We order you gotta put that down, you gotta smile. Are you are you little I like Bob's that like Randy Bob and you yeah, smile. Are you still home? Mm -hmm. I don't see it. I'm not sure. <laughs> Alright, All right. thank you, Bob. You wanna say anything? No. You sure? <laughs> Come on, Laura. For our last individual award, I'm going to ask Ashlyn if she would come up. And Lynn, if you would come up as well. Mm -hmm. right, good evening, Mayor and City Council members. 
So, <laughs> the week leading up to Wings Brewing Air Show, it was definitely crunch time for travel and tourism. And uh, that's why I wanted to recommend Lynn Grantham for the Golden Star Award because of her efforts. Um, the director and deputy director relied heavily on our office for a lot of last minute changes and for marketing and ske performer schedules. And I was really in a bind to find a lot of help um, for coverage for the sponsorship tent and just getting everything set up um, and for coverage for a lot of different aspects of the air show. But Lynn was scheduled to be off the Friday before air show to go to a wedding that weekend. Instead, she went above and beyond what the job would call for. And I don't even remember asking her to come and help. She just knew there was a need. And without a hesitation, she rearranged her travel plans and came to work on her day off to make sure that the tent represented the city well in front of one of the biggest audience that Goldsboro has. So, and although she was supposed to leave her friends, uh, uh, wedding on Friday, she decided to stay in town to be on call for Saturday morning in case extra hands on deck were needed. Uh, I could go on and on and on about how much she helped. She even helped secure transportation uh, with a truck to get everything. She came to my office, she loaded everything up, she went on base, she unloaded everything. She was there from the time we needed to be there for the tent till the job was done, till the end of the day. And then she stayed in town that Saturday morning to make sure we, if anything else was needed, she was there. So. Anyways, she went the extra two miles, and that's why she deserves this. So. Good deal. Yeah. Um, I nominated the three individuals that are coming up um, for a job well done. Um, they've consistent, consistently exercised professionalism, integrity, um, and show um, what the city stands for. Um, we went on several EMS calls this year. Uh, we we kind of talk about it amongst us, ourselves, but we've had some serious calls. And I'll just talk briefly about three of them. Um, one of them was a uh, an infant child who um, we went to and unfortunately um, didn't make it. And that's difficult for anyone to deal with. Later on that same evening, we went to another unresponsive call with an elderly patient. And um, we were able to get that patient revived. And um, these, these three individuals took it upon themselves on their time off to go by and, and check on the family members of both um, the infant and the elderly. And that shows, uh, you know, extremely, extremely uh, professionalism, uh, quite frank. Um, then moving forth to another um, EMS call, it was with an elderly patient. Um, we got her revived, and uh, she survived for about a week or so. And uh, she eventually succumbed to her, her um, injuries, I guess you could say. And uh, we followed up with a patient, um, with a family, and, you know, through that week, and when she passed, um, Firefighter Polak took it upon himself to uh, find out when the wake or the funeral was going to be, and he went on behalf of all of us to show his uh, to show our condolences. And I think that that's that's big, you know, because when you're on shift, you know, you're expected to perform, and we do. What you do on your time off is, you know, your own business. But they they still choose to live by the city values even on the time off. So. Outstanding. Awesome. Y'all know the deal. Turn around. Come on. We're going to have to squeeze in here a little bit more. 
Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, th these are part of my code enforcement team. Uh, this is my code enforcement, one of my code enforcement officers, Gaston Lopez. And this is a part-time record that Durham McKenzie that the city um, council allowed me to hire um, last year. And they've been doing a good job throughout the city. On May the 25th, 2017, at approximately 3.45 p.m., Gaston Lopez and Darryl McKenna were traveling on Canal Street when they noticed two males unloading a large motorcycle from a 15-foot-long U-Haul trailer on a small ramp. One of the males lost control of his side of the motorcycle, causing it to fall to the ground on top of him. Gaston and Darryl immediately exited the vehicle and helped move the motorcycle off the man. The throttle of the handlebar had actually punctured the man's foot and it was bleeding profusely. Gaston contacted the rescue squad who transported the man to the hospital. Um, these gentlemen were out doing their normal duties. Um, they was on the way to the transfer station um, to get rid of some bags that they have picked up and they saw this and I think it was a, a great job to do something like that. Three was sitting there not doing anything. Now I know. Um, last month, uh, prior to the air show, we were asked by the Goldsboro Police Department if we could help map out and plan and also paint some auxiliary parking. And without missing a beat, these gentlemen jump up and did exactly what was needed done. I, th I believe it took us, what, a day and a half? They spent an entire day and a half just out there. Um, measuring, marking, and painting extra parking spots just to ensure the, the ease for anybody coming out to, for the air show. And for that, that's why I nominated uh, these four gentlemen. All right, another great job. Thank you. Donnie? 
Thank you, sir. Matthew? What? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Before we move to public hearings, I would like to say one thing. I just want to take one minute to tell you the reason we do this award is these are all special people. We have a lot of really great employees at this city, but there are a lot of people who go above and beyond their everyday job. And they don't do it for the award. They do it because they're good people, they care about this community, and they care about the people in this community. So I do want to take a minute to thank them and thank all our, all our staff, because everybody does try to make this city better. And I especially thank all y'all, and I'm glad we were able to recognize you. And please take that back to, to your various departments. And we do appreciate what you do. And y'all are welcome to stay for the whole meeting. I mean, don't feel like you have to leave. <laughs> And Scott, next time, y'all got to do like half and half. I need to do a little better. I thought my battery was going to go dead. I think with that, Jimmy, I think we're ready to start item D under public hearing. Item D, um, contiguous annexation request, Gala Spring Housing Associates, LLC, northwest corner of Gala, Best Road and Austin Boulevard, 5.3 acres. Um, there's an attached um, annexation report. Um, I'm not going to go through the report unless the council wants me to uh, go through the memo. The City Council at that meeting on June the 5th, 2017 scheduled a public hearing for the proposed annexation of the subject property. A public hearing notice was properly advertised stating the time, place, and purpose of the meeting. Pursuant to GS 160A-31, at the public hearing, all persons on the property in the area proposed to be annexed, as well as residents of the municipality, shall be given an opportunity to be heard on the proposed annexation. If council determines that the proposed annexation meets all the requirements of GS 160A-31, it has the authority to adopt an annexation ordinance. The report um, that's attached indicates that this request meets all of the requirements. All city services can be provided to the property. The recommendation will be by motion after the public hearing adopt the attached ordinance annexing the Gallup Spring Housing Associates LSC property effective June 30, 2017. Thank you, sir. Any questions, Jimmy? All right. If not, this is a public hearing for the continuous annexation request for Gallup Spring Housing Associates LLC. Would anyone like to speak? Anybody like to speak? Yes, ma'am. But you're speaking on this public hearing, ma'am. Yes. Oh. Okay, no. <laughs> yes, sir. Do you need his name and address? If, if you will, sir, give Melissa your, your name and address, please. I'll be sitting out there looking at the banner up here. I don't think one of you can, uh, maybe, maybe Mr. Broadway, I don't know, Mr. Acock, can remember in 1947 when we had our 100th, uh, Centennial celebration in Goldsboro. I was in fourth grade. Anybody up here remember that? Well, the reason I, one reason I brought this up, and also, by the way, I started out in the first grade. This was at William Street School when I was in fourth grade. I walked downtown to see the celebration. Uh, in the first grade through the third grade, <clears throat> I went to school at uh, Seymour Johnson Homes. We were all in one room, three grades. And then from th the third grade, uh, fourth grade, William Street School, and then to the high school, where I graduated in 1956. But uh, one reason I brought this up is it appears to me 
and I've been around a long time, I'm 78 years old, that we don't have much respect for the citizenry, especially for the people like me, the elderly, senior citizens. M Mr. Sutton, keep, let me stop sorry. you one minute. I think you're wanting to speak under the public comment period time. Well, yeah, just sit in the public comment. This is only to do with this one item. What was out for the annexation? Well, I didn't realize yeah. that. I so didn't, let us let us finish that. this, and you'll get your turn in about two more times. Well, okay? I didn't I didn't understand. All right, this, I'm so. sorry. I'll, I'll be clear when we get no, the public no. comment. <laughs> no, okay. If I'd have known that, I definitely wouldn't come up here. That's no. all right. Well, you can come back when we annexation. get the public comment. Annexation. Yeah, this is about the Geller Best annexation. Oh, good. Yeah. All right, thank I you. Didn't, I, didn't, I, I had my hearing aids on. That's okay. It's no problem. No problem. Does anybody want to speak about the Geller Best annexation? If not, we're going to close this public hearing and move to the next. Yeah, Mayor. You did have oh, a I'm sorry. We got to have a yeah. We we, uh, to. we have a, a a motion to approve, or we need a motion to approve. So move. Second. Yeah. Any discussion? All those favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Okay, Jim. Item B is a non-contiguous annexation request. Rico Properties LLC. It's located on the northwest corner of Wayne Road Drive and Thomas Road, 30.4 acres. Um, the City Council that meeting on May 15, 2017, scheduled the public hearing for the proposed annexation of the subject property. If Council determines that the proposed annexation meets all the requirements of GS 160A 58, it has the authority to adopt an annexation ordinance. In addition to those requirements, the City adopted a policy which allows annexation of the non contiguous area subject to a number of requirements. The requirements governing non contiguous annexation are as follows um, A through D. I'm not going to read those. <clears throat> As indicated in the attached report, the Irish proposed annexation meets all the above items. The recommendation would be by motion adopting ordinance annexing Red Coat Properties LLC site effective June 3rd, 2017. All right. Any questions, Mr. Rowe? Yeah. All right. This is a public hearing for Red Coat Properties, the annexation of Red Coat Properties. Would anybody like to speak? Seeing none, we'll close this public hearing. And you have a recommendation to adopt the orders in front of you. So moved. Uh, any discussion? All those favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. All right, item F. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Good evening. Item F is a public hearing to consider an incentive grant agreement with Project F. We can now divulge that the name of the company involved is Stormberg Foods. Stormberg Foods has developed plans for the renovation of an existing facility and installation of manufacturing machinery and equipment in Goldsboro, North Carolina. The City Council of Goldsboro believes that the location of new industries and the expansion of existing industries is vital to the economic health of Goldsboro and the welfare of its citizens. The City Council wishes to encourage such development by means of offering incentives to recruit new industries and aid in the expansion of existing industries. Such incentives, such incentives are predicated on the notion of expanding Goldsboro's tax base and providing additional jobs for Goldsboro citizens that pay wages higher than the current prevailing wage, average hourly wage in that particular industry. The company's expected to hire over 50 employees and pay an additional $8,000 per year in property taxes to the city. Pursuant to North Carolina state law, a public hearing is being held on, the, on, on a proposal to provide economic incentives to Stormberg Foods, totaling $26,110, which would be $5,222 a year over a five-year period based on an incentive agreement that would have an approximately $1,415,000 capital investment in the creation of at least 50 jobs. The recommendation will be following a public hearing and depending on any comments received, staff would recommend that council consider adopting a resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an economic grant agreement with Stormberg Foods. We do have Ms. Crystal Guest with the development line presence if you had any particular questions in regards to the proposal. Any questions? Randy? All right. If not, this is a public hearing to consider an incentive grant for Stormberg Foods. Would anybody like to speak for or against? Good evening, Good evening, Mayor, City Council. As usual, I always like to get paper out in my briefings. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks. Good evening. Good 
Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I come before you tonight to ask only that you delay this action for at least two weeks to give the city and the city manager the opportunity to come back to give a little more insight into this company. Uh, it was quite some time ago, I remember coming before the city council for APV Baker. I think uh, the mayor was the only one on the council at that time because they was giving a $150,000 grant to the bakery and matching the county giving to try to keep the bakery here. Well, they took our $150,000 and the counties and nine months later moved down the road to Clayton. I'm not saying by all means that this company intends to do that. All I'm saying is that I like to see when we start getting new companies in Goldsboro and Wayne County, that we try to get a little more information from these companies and try to get a little more information as far as the company gonna have what's called an equal opportunity employer. What is the corporate culture of the company? What is its workplace diversity like? What is the, are they gonna have a workforce that's reflective of the community? And all, all the jobs that talk about the 60 jobs are all those low level jobs and the supervisor and the managers are coming in with the company. I realize this may be a departure for the way we used to doing business. We so happy to get business sometime in Goldsboro or North Carolina, <coughs> mostly any county. We just welcome them in and don't ask a whole lot of questions. You're gonna hire people, come on in. But years down the line, we start seeing a company takes on a, cult, uh, a, a, a company culture that may not be advantageous to all the citizens of Wayne County and Goldsboro. And since I've been here, I did give you some examples. And I said, Goldsboro already have too many businesses, workplaces that lack a meaningful, diverse employment staff. And three specific reasons I point out examples is a healthcare office that I've observed for 27 years and never seen a black nurse employed and it's ongoing. A home improvement store, the observation in 2010, which is not that long ago, that had 102 white males on duty <coughs> and two black males. A community college observation that during 1990 to 2005, we had a nursing school that averaged 20 white students and two black. Now I say that not to be disparaging about our county, but these things do exist. There are several companies in Goldsboro and Wayne County that simply have too many whites employed. But neither you nor me or anyone else, unless they want to get a trip to Cherry, is going to go up and tell an employer, you have too many whites. But what I have done in the past, especially as far as the home improvement, I've, I've questioned them to say, have you not been able to find in a count, Wayne County more than two black males for your employment? And it has changed somewhat. They have a, quite a few more, but they're all on night, so we still don't get to see that many. But in any event, I, I just like to, for us to pause for a minute, give the city manager or whoever's in charge of interviewing new companies, and just start adding a little bit more instead of just reading in the paper. And I know Randy means well, just coming up and saying what the economic, but just tell us a little bit. This company is from. Uh, this company is from South Africa. And I just gave this picture on the back, not to be disparaging, but to show you the culture of that particular. This is, this is an entertainment group that's at a four-star hotel. So if we went to this uh, city and stayed in a hotel, this is the type of entertainment. Now, normally we wouldn't expect to see that here in America, and hopefully not in Goldsboro, but that's, that's a part of their culture. And we may need to know a little bit more about companies. Uh, and if, if we can find out that they can be an equal opportunity employer, 
and have a workforce that's re re truly reflection of the community in which they reside in, myself personally, I would be more than willing to give more than 26,000 as an incentive. And I, and I leave you with that and for you to consider. Thank I you, appreciate sir. your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? Anybody else like to speak? If not, we're gonna close the public hearing and you have a recommendation to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute an economic ag agreement grant for Project Stormberg. Yep. Mm -hmm. Move. We should, we should go ahead. Okay. Well, is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those say raise your right hand and say aye. Aye. Yeah. Opposed? You got that, Melissa? Okay. All right, the motion carries. All right. So now with that, we're going to move to public comment period time. Everybody has three minutes if you'd like to speak. And Mr. Sutton, you want to come, or if you can come first, and you have three minutes. This is the public com comment period. Okay, first of all, I want to thank you all for putting that cone down there by my building. I appreciate that. But we need a sign up there that says watch for pedestrian crossing, like you have right out in front of here. We okay. need one of those too. But I do want to thank you for putting that sign up. Well, last time, I'm sorry, I, I heard you mention the yellow sign. I didn't catch the pedestrian crossing sign, so I guess we got more work to do. Well, how much will it cost to put one of those right. up? It doesn't matter what it costs, ma'am. I just didn't catch that, but we'll work on it, okay? We, we, right. we, we, we tried to hear what you said. We understand people congregate, and we're trying to make that better. I know Councilmember Williams has worked on it. I've worked on it, and we're trying to help you. And he has done a good job. Okay. He has done a fantastic job. He's kept me from blowing my lid. Well, we don't want you to blow your lid. He did a, if he no, did no, that, no. he did a fine job. You really don't. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I could tell you my nickname, but I don't think it would go over too well. All right. <laughs> All right. We're good. Thank you. We'll look into the, we'll look into the sign. Do more than look into it. Okay. I want to see one up there. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm trying. Mr. Sutton? Uh, the reason I said what I said was uh, I was up here a while back, and uh, this is not money as much as it is principal. Uh, this all started in December 2016. It's really pathetic. Anyway, and it's a it's a responsibility, the city's responsibility. I guess that every yard in this in Goldsboro has a sewer tap. And the sewer tap's owned by the city. Sewer tap's supposed to be cleaned periodically. They tell me once a year, I don't know. We've had that sewer tap now for what, thirty seven years since we started in nineteen eighty. Never been cleaned out in thirty seven years. And then all of a sudden my wife uh, building is flooded with water for the washing machine and the commode, et cetera. And um, we spent money to have the pipes cleaned out, checked, camera put in it, in the pipes and whatever, but anyway, the sewer pipes, and couldn't find anything. And then uh, someone came out there, in fact, several people came out there, and um, first ones came out there, walked up and down the place out there, up and down the street trying to find water running. They couldn't find any water running. Well, I don't know what that had to do with sewer tap, but anyway, then the next one came out there, and uh, I had to leave, and about an hour I came back, and there it was, the sewer tap. I hadn't, I'd never seen it. It's been out there since uh, 1980, and uh, sticking up out of the ground. And uh, anyway, it was cleaned out, and that solved the problem. But it looks like to me that there's negligence on the city's part here. And I know you can't take care of everything, and, and but it's, it, it is something like liability as far as I'm concerned. 
And the reason I mentioned this up here, the 1947, is I, I have been around a long time, and I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, I, I've, I've never seen a city council who didn't have any feelings, any more feelings than maybe some of you do for other people. I uh, read about it in the paper. It's very evident in the paper that the feelings are lacking as far as passion, compassion for your fellow citizenry and as far as helping them out. And of course, the reason that I'm up here, uh, or living up here, is because our house got flooded in October of last year. We're living in a, we've been very blessed with FEMA put us a trailer up here. We're living in the back of a parking lot. And that's where this all got started. And uh, we've been living there since December of last year. And we appreciate you giving us the opportunity to, to live up here. But um, I saw where I think it's about $487 that y'all voted yourself for health insurance, $500 a month, $6,000 a year. This Stevens over here makes, Lord knows how much, $150,000 a year. Um, fringe benefits and all that. But okay. <laughs> Don't use that at the end of a sentence. That's not good English. <laughs> I'm just going to point. But I can't little. understand this. I really can't. Uh, th like I say, this is this is not money. I don't have to have this hundred thirty-five dollars. But nobody has called me. Nobody has written me a letter. Nothing. I haven't heard the first word from anybody since I was up here. And don't you think that's what they call respect? Lack of respect. I, th I think it is. Thank you, sir. And I think maybe y'all can improve on that. But I would like to know why, because. There's no respect in the letter either. Okay. It says C.B. Sutton instead of Mr. Sutton. It says Dear C.B. Sutton instead of Dear Mr. Sutton. You've got an insurance company that doesn't even have respect. So I guess it goes with the course. You, you don't respect people, and you hire insurance companies that don't respect people. Okay? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Would anybody else like to speak during the public comment period? Come on up, Miss Stanford. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. My problem has not gone away from Bosco Beach. They're still riding all night long. Now, what are y'all going to do? Okay. I hate to say I told you so, but I begged them not to take that part into the ETJ before. They didn't listen. Now y'all won't, y'all see you got a mess. On your hands. But that's in the past. Okay. The letter from the sheriff says he will enforce the general statute. The letter that Mr. Rowe sent to Mr. Pierce said they were trespassing on county and city property. So, what are y'all going to do to enforce that trespassing thing? Mr. Pierce said he'd be more than happy if a to take care of that problem. He wants to own it. So that's how you can get rid of that problem, uh, them trespassing on y'all's land. They're parking trailers on it, making a fortune. Now, if anybody's going to make money off the FEMA land, it needs to be the county and the city. Right? Now let's stop it. <coughs> There's your answer right there. Okay? This little map here shows you how much y'all have got right in here. Yes, ma'am. Those right there. That's how much Bosco's got. Right. They got no reason whatsoever to be on your property when they got all this. Do you think they have? You can share that one. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, and another little quickie. Uh, who does inspecting of the county uh, FEMA land every three years and sends the report to Raleigh? The county? It's supposed to be the city and the county. I, I can't answer that. I can get you an answer, but I don't know the answer. Well. Evidently, y'all ain't been doing it, because when I talked to Mr. Chris Cruz, he didn't, couldn't tell me who was doing it, and it didn't sound like he'd been getting any reports. You might want to look into and, that. And he's with who? With FEMA? He's with FEMA. 
We'll, we'll you, you need his it. phone number, just call the house and I'll give it to you. <laughs> Uh, you want, might want to look at the fact that trailers down at Bosco Beach appear to be round the clock year, and according to uh, the little deficiency that was written up, they can only be there no longer than 180 days. You might want to look at it. I'll bring you some more things next time. Okay? You have a great week, Miss Stanley. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so Yes, ma'am. Would anybody else like to speak? Anybody else? All right, we're going to close the public hearing and move on to our next. Uh, we have the consent agenda. No, he's not. We, public comments? We just closed the we public comments. I was standing, Mr. Mayor, you had your head down and talking to the people. Ask the people how many people seem to stand. Go ahead, you have three minutes. I so appreciate the Mayor and the City Council here and speak on these occasions. But nevertheless, I think I bring up things that need to be brought up. Good evening, my name is Charles Wright. And I'm coming to address in three minutes that I strongly recommend the council delay its vote for the approval of 642,500 with Daniels and Daniels construction for the 2,500 square foot addition to Seymour Johnson Air Force Sports Center. In review of the notes that we got and the thousands of pieces of information as a result of the Freedom of Information back a, a year ago, we discovered that Mr. Guthrie did reach out to Daniels and Daniels in December of 2013 and got a consultation on the very project that Daniels and Daniels has now been awarded. I have several concerns about that action regarding this contract, such as unfair competitive advantage, organizational personal conflicts of interest, unequal access to information, biased ground rules, and unusual favoritism to a particular contract. If the attorney sees that some of this language seems familiar, it's from some federal, federal statutes that uh, guidelines what, what determines organization and personal contracts personal conflicts of interest when it comes to contracts. So therefore, I'm reaching out to appropriate investigated state and federal agencies to determine if any illegal actions, conflicts of interest, inner or inappropriate business ethics occurred between the city of Goldsboro and the contractor Daniels and Daniels Construction as they were was awarded this contract to build this addition to Seymour Johnson Air Force Base on a competitive bid basis while they was allowed to give consultation in 2013, which is, I believe, in violation of several statutes. I would ask that the council put off reviewing and approving this action until, the, until such, time the investi, uh, the, the, such time investigative reports are received by this city council and executive staff. And I'd just like to close by saying I also have concerns concerning, concerning the actual cost of the addition. As you can see, there was a verbal essex for the building addition was 300 to 375, yet the written shows 600,000. The perimeter fence, uh, Estimate was for 367, 390,000, yet written documents show 615,000. I, I invite you to look through this packet at your convenience, especially the uh, packet number three with the five pages. It's very interesting reading. Uh, as always, I like to ask the city council, did they have any comments or questions? Or should I expect to read any comments or questions in the news arguments in the upcoming days? Thank you, sir. If not, I thank you.
All right, now we're going to close the public comment period. I'm sorry about that. Um, so now you have the consent agenda. Chair and Council, your consent agenda consists of items G through N. Again, your consent agenda items that we have discussed were G through N. Any questions, Bob? Not with your motion. Motion to approve the consent agenda items G through N. Is there a second? Second. Well, we need a roll call vote. Yes, ma'am. You said G through N? Yes. No, ma'am. Yes. Council Member Yes. Council Member Yes. Council Member Yes. Consent agenda is approved. Items requiring the individual action, we have none. City Manager report? Uh, none this evening, Mayor. City Attorney? No reports, Mayor. Uh, Council Mayor and Council Member reports. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Aycock. No reports. Sam? None. Mr. Foster? No comment. Mr. Stevens? Um, I just wanted to. <clears throat> I want to say thank you to uh, the chamber and uh, county officials um, for coming out last week and my attempts to bring uh, technology jobs to Goldsboro and Wayne County. Um, I, I find it very funny and kind of disheartening at the same time that we still fight over uh, things that should be very apparent and should be going on in our nation and in, in, in our world right now, and that's we are all equal and we should not be fighting over what we should be putting in place, that we have to have this or we have to have that. It should be very apparent that it doesn't matter what race, color, or creed you are, if you have the aptitude and education, then you should be able to facilitate getting a job. Um, my attempts were, and what are still my attempts, and will continue always be as an African American that was raised by older African Americans and some that are passed away and gone on to the next world, is that we were a people of ambition and that it didn't matter what we had, that we took every dime, every cent, and that's how we obtained land, and we put ourselves in to working as hard as we could to have something and that we're not going to throw the card out that we're oh so poor us we can't we're going to fight for everything that we get so as myself and anybody that's with me whether they're black white or hispanic or whatever your cultural difference may be that if you truly want something you will be with me and you will help me fight to bring the future and technology jobs to Goldsboro and Wayne County. And I thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rollins? No comment. Mr. Williams? No comment. All right, we stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for coming.